Hello, everybody. My name is Dirty Harry. At least, uh, at least that's what I'm going with. <laughs> uh, nickname makes sense based on my actual name. Uh, people have actually called me that at some point or another. I didn't just make it up myself. Uh, I'd feel like a tool if I gave gave myself my own nickname. But, uh, you know, for purposes of having a channel, a uh, channel on YouTube and kind of carving out an identity, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just call myself uh, The Dirty Harry. So welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my first video. Uh, my first recording that I've actually pieced together and edited and made a title card and did Photoshop and optimized and balanced the audio and dropped so far only $20 but a year's subscription I have now for Adobe Creative Suite a uh, year, uh, year subscription that will run me $240 when, when the year is up and that's with a student discount regularly it's uh it's like fifty dollars a month, so so uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, yeah, uh, point of this video, just to acclimate myself with the new software that I have. Practice uh, talking to myself. Um, I am a weird person, and I don't have a lot of friends, so you'd think that it would kind of come naturally to just sit here and talk to myself, uh, but that is actually not the case. Um, I find it extremely awkward, and I am only willing to do this when everybody else in the house is asleep, and no one else is around. I feel a little subconscious about it. I feel like it sounds weird. But that's just me. This this could sound just fine. I could sound weird for rattling on about about it sounding weird. I don't know. But I'm just kind of getting used to it. Uh, I'm not actually recording this commentary while playing the game. I recorded the game first, and then I'm recording this commentary in post. And then editing it in via via Adobe Premiere. It's a lot easier. It's kind of difficult to play video games and talk at the same time. That's uh, it's beyond my skill set, apparently. I find it extremely difficult. I tried doing it, and there's just extremely long pauses, and I just I stop moving in the game and forget what I'm doing, and it's just a mess. Someday I might stream... Sure, I will at some point once once I uh, once I get a little more practice in with this shit. But for right now, I'm just gonna record videos and then record commentary and post. I'm a little bit more comfortable with that. But uh, started with this video because it's something. Uh, this game is just a fun, fun, simple little game. It's like a classically styled 2D side scroller. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, the old retro uh, retro consoles, the legacy consoles like NES, Super NES, Sega Genesis. I actually still have uh, all those systems. Still have my original Sega Genesis since I was a kid. That's pretty exciting. Kind of a fucking pack rat. But yeah, I like those games so. I was uh, pretty stoked at the idea of this game when they when they when they put it out. Not stoked enough to actually buy it. I got it for free, um, the PlayStation Plus membership. So if anybody's listening to this in the month of April 2016, um, Force is uh, free with a PlayStation Plus membership. So sign up or if you already have it. Just go ahead and download this. It's definitely worth the zero dollars you will have spent on it that much I can say. Even if you never play it, at least you have it. You could be one of those people. 
Maybe that person is listening to this right now. You know who you are. That guy that just buys video games and only plays Call of Duty, but buys every video game that, that comes out. Yeah, man, I highly recommend Bloodborne. It's a great game. You should pick it up. All right, boss, I'll do that. I'll pick that up. Three days later. You play Bloodborne? Yeah, I, I, uh, I downloaded it. It downloaded. I started it. I died. And uh, I don't know, man. I just, I just, I just went back to playing Call of Duty. Alright. Cool. That guy. I'm just fucking with you, homie. Anyway. Um. Yes, definitely a very good game. Very fun. Very simple. It's not something that you really have to commit to. You can just kind of pick it up and play it. It's very arcadey. And it's got a lot of cool characters in it. Just basically action stars from the 1980s. All the greats. And I guess it's not just 80s. It's all different eras. The emphasis and the style of the game is kind of more centralized on, like, that era of, uh, of action films. Like, action films. Basically, it's just, like, Rambo. The style of Rambo, from like the environments to the main character, the character that you, you, know, you start with at the beginning of the game, that's all kind of styled after the movie Rambo. And they just kind of built from that. But all sorts of great characters, uh, not including this guy, MacGyver, McBrover, or whatever goofy, goofy st styling that they choose. Every, every character in this game has some iteration of the word bro in their name. It's pretty stupid. Sometimes it's amusing. It wears itself out kind of quick, but you know, it is what it is. It's a game called Brawl Force. I don't really expect highbrow, high class, um, subtle, subtle humor from it. It is what it is. Not, not bashing it at all. Just, just a come across as a pessimistic person from time to time. Um. Yeah, I really like the character, like the the lineup of characters that they chose for this game. Because you know, I'm a huge movie buff, love movies, especially action, science fiction, horror. Speaking of horror, fucking Bruce Campbell, Ash from the Evil Dead films, wielding a chainsaw and boomstick. Lost that one. Commando. Colonel Matrix, did you leave anything for us? Just bodies. Rocking his bodies as he walks off. Boondock Bros. Obviously Boondock Saints. Good movie. I think it's pr I think it's kind of overrated. Not kind of, it's extremely overrated. It's an okay movie, it's not great. Biggest takeaway from it, dogs can't look up. That's a fact. If you, if you take anything away from that movie, it's, it's that fact. Dogs can't look up, and it would really fucking hurt to have a uh, toilet tank cover fall on you from six stories up. That would be fucking brutal. Yeah, Rambo, main character. Essentially. The poster. Poster child for this game. They are making another Rambo movie, that's exciting. Pretty. Pretty jazzed for that. I think Rambo 4 was the best film in the entire series. Not just because it was like super violent, but it's just there was a point to make it. You can tell that Sylvester Stallone really wanted to put that put that movie out there. Like he put a lot of work into it, a lot of work into the character. It's like the first movie I saw where I was like, hey, what? Sylvester Stallone, not a bad actor. Between that and I guess Rocky Balboa came out before that, and that was it had a silly premise and the setup was kind of dodgy. I didn't buy it 100%, but, like, 
acting, acting wise, and like the style of the film and everything was was excellent. That's definitely a proper way to end the series. Or, well, I guess <laughs> Creed just came out, so they didn't really end the series. But that was a good way to end, like, that that arc of uh, Rocky's fighting career. Definitely a lot better than fucking Rocky V. Blade's not a, one of the one of the one of my favorites on here. I don't really care for him. Motherfucker's always trying to ice skate uphill. Some motherfucker's always trying to ice skate uphill. That's my Wesley Snipes impression. If I'm gonna do impressions, I should probably put some effort as opposed to no effort. Or do or do ones that I'm good at. How about Arnold Schwarzenegger? For example. You know, at one point when I was a kid, I wished Arnold Schwarzenegger was my dad. Like, that would be cool to have a dad that had an Austrian accent. He's made of metal. He fucks his housekeeper. Then I could have a Venezuelan bastard brother. That would be neat. I like you, Cindy. I'm going to be hanging around. I'm going to be around you on days. Nights, weekends, holidays. I'm going to be with you until the end of time. Robocop, another great movie. Die Hard, another great movie. It's like that's the only thing I can say. These are all great movies. The the whole the whole part of that movie, the idea of him running around that fucking Nakatomi Tower barefoot and then ending up getting glass in his feet and having to deal with that. Such a cool idea. Like, that is just fucked up. If, if that was your situation. And granted, I'm sure he probably could have found shoes, but just having his feet all jacked up like that and he's picking glass out of them in the mirror. Definitely, in my opinion, favorite John McClane badass moment, picking glass out of his feet. Fuck Chuck Norris. I'm so glad those fucking Chuck Norris jokes ran their course. Like, they were amusing for a minute, but they kind of got a little old. I think... Chuck Norris killed it himself when he was in Expendables 2, and for his cameo, he he had a Chuck Norris joke about, um, I heard you were dead. I got bit by a snake, and after 24 hours, the snake died, or some shit like that. It was... Definitely wasn't the best Chuck Norris joke to, to end the end the run on. But it had to end. Sooner or later. Matrix movies are also overrated. First one's decent. Terror the second Matrix movie had the that chase scene on the freeway. That was awesome. Still one of my favorite chase scenes. But that that was the, the only part of the movie that I enjoyed. Speaking of Indiana Jones, they're making another Indiana Jones movie. Why? Why? Because Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was received so well? That is the only fucking movie I've ever walked out on in the theater. Only movie I've ever walked out on after paying top dollar to see it in a theater was Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. That shit was tedious and silly. I mean, I, I mean, you, you can argue that there's a lot of silly moments in the Indiana Jones films. I mean, in the second movie, him and that fucking annoying woman and Glenn from The Walking Dead like .5 or whatever his name is. Rimshot? No. No, that's Ernest Dog. 
Short round. Yeah, him and short round and whatever fuck that screaming prissy bitch. They go down a waterfall that's like I don't know how fucking high. Like Niagara Falls. Like that's a that would might be a, a good scaling uh, comparison. Go down a waterfall like that, straight down in a raft. There's like a minecart chase. Like that's kind of ridiculous. Like there's a lot of ridiculous moments in Indiana Jones. Each each one of those films has its has its moments, but it's just back to back to back to back nonsense in Crystal Skull. Like that shit with Shia LaBeouf swinging with the monkeys. What the hell came up? You know who came up with that? George Lucas. George Lucas came up with that nonsense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was silly move on my part. Running back and getting shot by the same damn dude. These guys are stupid. Kind of took a loud slurp of tea in there if they added that out. Or maybe not. Because then I would just screw up the sink. Then I'd have to resync it or. Oh, I could just delete that. Yeah. Yeah. Pardon the fact that I'm commenting on how to edit this. It's professional video production that I have put together. Um, I suppose I could discuss the point of all of this. So, I, uh, some of you watching may know, as I'm sure most of the people that are watching this are the people that I'm coming to directly and being like, hey, this is my YouTube channel, you should watch this. Co-workers and family and close friends. So some of you may know where I work, and if you know where I work and if you know me, you know you know that I believe that my uh, that my full time job is literally well not literally I guess figuratively figuratively just sucking the soul out of me. It is just grinding me down. And I kind of need an outlet, like a creative outlet, something to something to do. I need a hobby. Like drugs are drugs aren't a very good idea. That would be my other choice of a hobby. But I'm not gonna go that route. Problem of uh, not really being where I want to be, not really enjoying enjoying what I do on the regular. So uh, my way of fixing fixing that uh, that lack of fulfillment that I have is uh, to do something that requires some some work, something creative, something that's creatively stimulating. Uh, tie it into something that I enjoy to do in my free time, which is play video games. And, uh, the shitty thing about video games, as much as, as much as I love, uh, gaming and, and I, I'm just interested in, you know, following it via, you know, news clips on YouTube, Let's Plays on YouTube, it's, that, repl uh, that has replaced TV for me, is is YouTube, watching, you know, content creators, you know, that I follow on there, has replaced TV, but, um, what was I saying? I completely lost my train of thought. This is why I need practice at this. Well, I was saying, yeah, like gaming is just, it's a solitary, solitary pastime. 
And, um... I don't really have any friends that game. I mean, my friends are... Friends are all, you know, upstanding adults. <laughs> they gotta do real shit. Not this, uh, not this petty nonsense. This is, this is my thing. But it's a, it's a solitary activity. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make it, make it really worth something. Kind of, like, put something out there. Put something out into the world. Related to what I enjoy. And you talk about the things that I like. You know, it's, I don't, I don't really know what the ultimate point of it is. But, it's a hell of a lot better than, you know, feeling like, all that my life really consists of, really, is pretty much, you know, getting up every day and going to work for eight hours and spitting out plastic corner guards and handrails. Like, that's, you know, it pays the bills. I do a good job. I'm not, I'm not a, like, I'm not a shit worker. I've got very, I've got very good work ethic, you know. Properly incentivized, obviously. But you know, I, I want more. I want more from life than that. You know, I want to do something that I enjoy. And that's what this is about. More specifically, um, there is one video game in particular that is literally devoured. And I mean, literally in the proper sense this time. Literally devoured my entire. I guess it's still figurative, but it's more, it's both, it's both. It consumed all of my time in the past year. The past year entirely has been devoted to one series of games, and that's, that's Dark Souls. I just discovered these games. They've been coming out since 2009. That's when Demon Souls came out. That's from Sauce. First game of that, uh, under that brand, under that style. And that, that came out in 2009. I never heard of it. You know, it was a, it was a Japanese title that Atlas had uh, brought over here. And, you know, I, didn't, I never knew that back then. I didn't even know who Atlas was. I didn't know that they were, they would, you know, pick up, you know, random games from Japan and localize them and bring them over here. I didn't know any of that. I, I played, you know, I played Call of Duty back then. That was my thing. I played Call of Duty, and I played Halo, and I played Grand Theft Auto. Like, I, I, I very much liked my mainstream AAA titles. And those, that game had completely slipped under my radar. It wasn't, I, you couldn't shoot people in it. Like, I couldn't shoot people, and there was no team deathmatch. And there was, there was no, there was none of that, so, you know, fuck if I care. Then, um, in 2011, I heard about a game that was fucking balls hard. And was, you know, like a classic video game in that sense. Like, like, you, back to the good old days where you didn't have infinite lives and infinite saves. You know, you couldn't just, you know, tap a hotkey and save wherever. Like, this is a game that you had to literally put some effort into. You literally had to learn how to play it. And that piqued my interest a little bit. I was getting kind of worn out on, you know, the same old, same old, easy, easy shit. This game didn't even have a difficulty. Dark Souls has a difficulty, but it's built into the game. It's not a menu selection, so... Anyway, I, uh, I picked that game up in 2011 and bounced right off the fucking thing, which is what most people will say, you know, of their first experience playing playing one of those games. And this, is, this conversation is going to go along for a while, by the way, because if you haven't been able to tell already, uh, I'm... I'm more than mildly obsessed with it, but that came out in 2011. I picked it up, and I sp spent maybe 20 minutes with it. I got out of my cell in the Undead Asylum and uh, ran into the first boss, died, went to the bonfire, tried to figure out the menu and how to equip things, and 
how all that worked for about 20 minutes and then just gave up never never touched it again i i don't even think i got to the wait no no i take that back i i think i walked away for a little bit came back to it went further ahead went online because <laughs> i couldn't beat the asylum demon and I'm not sure if I beat him or not. I think I just left, and I don't know if you can do that. But if you can, that's what I did, because that's seemingly what my memory would suggest. I didn't beat, I don't think I beat the Asylum Demon. I went straight for the cliff's edge where the crow or raven picks you up. Dropped me off in Firelink Shrine, and I did what everybody else does at that point. Every other newbie to the series, and I ran straight down to the graveyard, and I got my shit pushed in by a bunch of skeletons, and that was the end of that. I, I, I didn't pick it up again. So, fast forward two years, Dark Souls 2 comes out. This time, I'm a little bit more determined. You know, I've watched some videos on it. Um, I, by that point, I'd, I'd started watching YouTube channels regularly, and a couple of the people that I followed, like, two best friends play, like, Pat was talking, talking up the shit out of that game. Um, and some other people were, and I was like, you know, maybe I should try that again. And, I, I, again, I started it up, looked at the menu, and was like, oh, I remember this. I don't understand this. And I walked around a little bit, and... There was a couple notes on the ground with like basic controls, but again, I was like, yeah, I, you know, I, I don't, I didn't really have the time to commit to it, it was too complicated. It wasn't until Bloodborne came out that finally I had, I got it, like, I forced myself to get it, I, and, I, and I played that game through to its entirety, and I loved it. I started going back and playing, you know, what I had missed. Starting with Dark Souls 2, I'm glad I played that one, like, concurrently with, I was playing that while I was playing Bloodborne, I'm glad I did. I'm glad that was my introduction to the Souls games, because I really liked the game. Really loved the game. And it was my first experience with, uh, with, not, not necessarily with a FromSoft game, with Miyazaki's titles, the director, obviously, for Dark Souls and Bloodborne. Um... Like, I was familiar with him as far as Bloodborne went, but I wasn't really seeing the massive differences in, like, you know, quality and, you know, anybody who knows, anybody, most people would be familiar with that, you know, with that argument, you know, against uh, the second installment in the Dark Souls series, is that it's, it's an inferior game when compared to the rest of the games in the series. But, you know, be that as it may, it was still a superior game to most shit that was you know, that was coming out, so I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm glad I played it then, because after I got through that, I started on Dark Souls 1, and yeah, it's, it's a much better game. It's significantly better. The design choices are, you know, a no-brainer. I Personally, I, I looking back on it, I, I, I don't see how you could justify a lot of the, the decisions that they made in Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2. It's, you know, but it is what it is. It, it's still it's still a relatively good game, and I I still enjoy it. I'm actually working on a new game plus run of it right now. But you know, like I like I you know like I stated, started working my way back, going through all the games. So in the past year, I made it through all the Souls games, and now with Dark Souls three coming out, which I have pre-ordered. Pre-order the Collector's Edition, Premiere, Big Rollin', Big Rollin', Big Money, High Rollin', fucking, so excited for that. I've never pre-ordered a Collector's Edition of the game, so that's, that's how confident I am with that purchase. I will happily give FromSoft, um, I will happily give that developer money before I have the product in my hands. I, I cannot say that about any other developer. So, hats off to that production team. 
So I'll be picking that up and, you know, bringing this all back around. Kind of the point of, you know, this channel is uh, mostly Souls content. I will upload a lot of other things from time to time. You know, I'm not just going to upload that, but that's kind of my primary focus. I really want to, you know, jump into that, you know, that community online. And I want to produce that kind of content. And I want, you know, I want the Dark Souls elite to watch my videos and bitch at me and complain and berate me and try to give me advice and hate how I do everything. Like, that's what I want. That's what I'm going for. And that's what I'm going to do. So, uh, stick around. I will definitely have more content coming up in the future. If you manage to make it through this awful, awful commentary up until this point, thank you, you're a saint. Keep watching, I'll keep you posted. Dirty Harry, out.